A big hello and welcome to another episode of the Big Bash Show for the KFC T20 Big Bash 2011-2012 league season. My name is Shura Taft and as you know, this is the place to come if you want to talk all things a Big Bash. We're going to get stuck into the fantasy game as well and try and answer some of your tweets, some of the questions you guys out there have for our resident expert who I speak of right now. I'm talking about my co-host from The Age, Mr. Jesse Hogan. How you doing? All right, mate. How are you? Some massive things happened in the last round, round five of the Big Bash, not least of which the weather's finally come into play in a couple of <laughs> games and the heat they've gotten off the off the bottom well not off the bottom but I mean off the mark that was a highlight because I think their uh, preparation has been really good to Brisbane heat and it was good to see them um, you know, finally get a win but gee if you're a Hobart supporter even though you're no longer unbeaten I think you'd be pretty proud of that sort of chase oh, yeah. like it within three runs of it 399 runs for the night thought that was a fantastic effort yeah, what, what are the odds? You know, rain hasn't affected the whole tournament. And then the two inaugural derbies both get ruined by rain, which is really unfortunate. But uh, it sort of helps, you know, the stars and the sixes sort of plug along. And then Perth Scorchers, you know, the old boys there keep rolling on. And finally, Brad Hogg's got some uh, figures rise, got some reward for some great bowling throughout the tournament. He's doing 40-year-olds proud all <laughs> around Australia. There's been some big performances. I'm going to get to that in the fantasy game. But, I mean, some players are just consistently playing well. Obviously, Travis Burt just, just rolls on. Gibbs as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think Travis Bird, I think the way he's going, I think you'd have to say he'd be a shoe-in to get his spot back in the National T20 team when it's sort of announced probably during the fourth test. And uh, yeah, I've just been amazed about how resilient he's been and got a pretty handy foil in O.A. Shah alongside him in the middle order. So I think that's a key reason, along with the bowling, why Hobart's doing so well. Well, the competition is going fantastically well. Some great crowds as well. Keep them going. They're absolutely massive as we head towards the big finals at the moment. As you said, Hobart Hurricanes, they keep doing the job. They are on top of the ladder. And although they had their first win, Brisbane Heat are bringing up the rear. Well, the question we ask every week is who's hot and who's not is based on the performances in the KFC Fantasy a Big Bash League game, which hopefully you're playing at the website. Of course, there's been some huge performances over the last few weeks and some big scores as well. When we talk about who's hot, there are some big players making scores. Obviously, Hayden, great to see him back making some runs. Of course, Travis Burt just rolls on. For you, who's hot at the moment? Yeah, those, those two, those especially Travis Burt, every game he's just been sensational. Leading run scorer in the competition and I think when it comes like I said, when it comes time to choosing the T20 team in a few weeks, he's sure to be there. Been really ultra reliable for the Hurricanes. Um, even Graham Manu, someone he probably wouldn't get a lot of points, but even for the Renegades, he's been amazing behind the stumps to Afridi, and particularly Sean Tate, saving a lot of um, wides, that sort of stuff. And it's amazing to see sort of a bloke who's sort of plucked out of retirement to do so well. But I think this week, in terms of anyone, you've got to go Herschel Gibbs. He's, um, you know, I didn't really have high expectations on him at the start. He's just been superb, really high scoring rate and really did the business again. So in terms of player of the week, I think you've got to go Herschel Gibbs. When anyone who's watched international games over the years would know Herschel Gibbs can smash runs when he needs to smash runs. Um, of course, great to see Matthew Hayden back. Obviously, some people around Australia will love that. And Mitchell Stark as well, who's obviously yeah. in the test team. Now people are excited about how the way he's bowling. Oh, I think it was really important for him because the last Sixers game he actually got dropped. Josh Hazelwood got the nod now that Hazelwood hurt himself. Stark really had to play. They decided to yeah, let him play, and I think now it really, I guess, helped his test causes, you know, getting three for 17, actually spearheading the win on a rain-affected day. Um, I think he's um, yeah, really helped his causes. The other side of the coin is who is not Jesse, and of course, over the weeks, we've been focusing on a few players in particular, especially guys from Melbourne, uh, Cameron White and Sean Tate, having a bit of a torrid time at the moment. But what about the City Thunder batting lineup? Oh, it's, um, it, I think when they came into this, it was a high-risk, high-reward strategy going, you know, for the two stars in Warner and Gale. Obviously, they didn't have a lot of luck when um, David Warner got called up to the test team and they, they lost the ability there. But I think, uh, you know, they really have relied too much on Gale and whenever he doesn't fire, they, uh, they, they just can't produce. There's no one really there to fill it slack. And now with Doug Bollinger injured and Fidel Edwards gone, I think they're really, their bowling stocks are looking really, really thin. And for the rest of the tournament, I really can't see them making any more damage. I think they've really done their dash. Oh, you've got to lift Sydney Thunder, guys. Now, hopefully you guys are playing the KFC uh, Big Bash Fantasy League game. Get to the website at bigbash.com.au if you want to play. You can share in over $20,000 of prizes. And of course, each week, the best performing team takes home 500 large. We love that indeed. So get to the website, play the game. Now it's important each week that you guys at home get the chance to talk to our resident expert and ask him questions that you have about the Big Bash League. And there's some great questions out there this week, Jesse. The first tweet comes from at Josh Hart 7 who says, 
Big Bash Show, what's the deal with Cameron White? We've been asking a bit. Does he even deserve to be selected to play T20 for Australia with eight runs in five games? It's been very hard to watch Cam in this uh, tournament. Um, you know, no matter which side you follow, um, you know, he's a really highly talented player, but we haven't really seen that for a while. Just having a sort of torrid time of things. Even the other night, um, you know, when he played there, he actually thought he'd survived a mm. caught behind dismissal only to actually be overruled by the third umpire to you know, continue that poor form. Uh, and even if you look at the stars, they're going to have a crunch decision because even their two reserve batsmen, Peter Hanscom and Alex Keith, are in good form in club cricket. In terms of the national T20 team, you think on form you'd have to say no, you couldn't select him, which is you know a massive call because he's the captain. Mm. I guess the, probably the one thing that you know he would hope that if selectors might think of is he's actually his last three games for Australia in T20, he's actually got about 30 odd at a decent run rate. So if you go the last time he's played. On that, he probably retain his spot, but otherwise, he could be in trouble. Well, perhaps you place a little bit of different importance yeah. on an international game versus yeah. a big bash game, which is a bit more fun. Not that I'm saying they don't take it seriously, but of course, when you're playing for your yeah. country, you probably take it a little bit. You've got to give him a chance, considering yeah. he's captain. But great question. Thank you very much for that. Our next tweet comes in from at Lynchy Lee, who says, How come Mitchell Stark is allowed to play and David Warner isn't? If they're both in the test squad, then how does that work? I think uh, when it comes to you know, at this stage of a test series, I think it really has got to be a compelling reason to actually uh, let a player in the test squad um, play in the Big Bash and the reason why it would actually be beneficial for them. I think for Warner, he's had pretty underwhelming time since the Hobart test, so he's best served actually just by focusing on his test batting. But for Stark, I don't think he yet until uh, this round, he actually hadn't played a game since the 27th of December, dropped for the January 2 game. So I think he really was in need of a run. Mm. Um, and I think it was totally justified, the decision, by the way. He went three for 17. I think he arguably has a now a much better chance of making the 11 for Perth than he would have otherwise. Do you think there's a difference between, obviously with batting-wise in the T20, there's a different style as they mm. test batting, but with bowling in T20, apart from the whole slower ball business, yeah. <laughs> it is basically trying to hit the pitch quickly, like Mitchell Stark yeah. would. So he probably bowls himself into form. So uh, he could be a chance of the Perth test, yeah? You think so, yeah. Great questions there. If you want to tweet in any questions you have about the Big Bash Show, remember, get on Twitter and hashtag Big Bash Show, and hopefully in the next few weeks, Jesse Hogan will answer your questions. All right, that's it for another week of the Big Bash Show. Thank you very much for joining us. Make sure you get down and support your team at the Big Bash Games. There's only a few more to go before the yeah. Big Bash Finals. Of course, this week, these are the games that are coming up. Hobart Hurricanes, they're the ones on top of the ladder. They're taking on the Melbourne Stars at Blundstone Arena, January 9. Who's going to win that, Jesse? Well, I think the uh, Stars are coming into form at the right time, and I think they might actually just sneak this one. Stars to knock them off. Adelaide Strikers taking on the Sydney Sixers at Adelaide Oval on January 10. Strikers terribly disappointing in the loss to the Scorchers, but I actually think the Strikers will probably win this, and that probably will be enough to guarantee them a semi-final spot. Well, there you go. Sydney Thunder, who aren't performing, they're playing the Perth Scorchers, who are at Homebush on January 11. Oh, now they've lost Fidel Edwards too. No Bollinger. I think that uh, it's going to be another win for the Scorchers, and I think it'll be on the way to the Scorchers' ceiling top spot. And the Melbourne Renegades battling on against the Brisbane Heat at Docklands on January 12. The Renegades probably have to win this one, yeah? They have to win, and they have to win well. And uh, I think they will win there. The only question is, I think... Um, you know, the, the margin needs to be very big to get their run rate back sort of among, amongst the pack. Hopefully Hodge to make triple figures. That'd be good for the competition. All right, hopefully you've enjoyed yourself. Remember, if you want to tweet anything at all, any questions you have for Jesse, get on Twitter and hashtag Big Bash Show and we'll try and get to your questions in the coming weeks. But until then, make sure you get to the games, enjoy it, support your team, and we'll see you next time.